Good morning and welcome to Coleman Today. I'm your host, Katie Spicer. It's Tuesday, January 23rd, 2024, and so far there's been no signs of horrible weather coming back. But there's a lot going on in local news, starting with sports as normalcy returns to Wallace State as both the girls' and boys' teams compete in the county tournament after being postponed temporarily due to the weather. We remember those who passed away this week during with our obits, and of course, we will check the weather. So let's not waste any more time. Here's today's top stories. Today, the boys and girls teams joined together to kick off the Coleman County Basketball Tournament on the campus of Wallace State Community College in Hansville. The tournament was to begin this past weekend, but due to inclement weather and issues with just getting students to school, school officials decided it was best to wait until the ice had thawed and roadways became easier to drive on. There will be plenty more about the games for today in our sports rundown. The North Alabama Agriplex is excited to announce major donors for its new Home for the Harvest capital campaign. This includes the tiered giving donors as well as the naming sponsors for specific rooms. The campaign, which kicked off fundraising in the fall of 2022, is focused on the Agriplex's campus expansion, a project aptly named the Community Hub. The proposed hub is an 8,525-foot square facility that will feature a fully equipped teaching kitchen and workspace shared with the Coleman County Extension Office, the North Alabama Agriplex and the farm technical assistance providers. The hub will be located in the Agriplex's current property in Coleman, just off of Highway 278 and I-65. With the Agriplex reaching over 26,000 programming participants in 2023 and over 7,700 of those on campus at the Agriplex, the new facility will create opportunities for both Agriplex and Extension to perform even more educational outreach. Of course, every big dream takes big money, and the Agriplex's 48-tiered giving donors contributed to one of six categories aptly named for an agriculture theme by pledging or donating. The harvesters have contributed $100,000 or greater, the cultivators $75,000, the growers $25,000, the sowers $10,000, the seeds $5,000, and the roots $1,000. The tiered givers will be featured on a prominent artistic donor wall in the new community hub. The Agriplex is currently working with local sign designer Bradley Brock and Creative Signs to create a custom donor wall design. There is still room to add your name or business on this wall. Memorials and honorariums are accepted. Two naming opportunities have been sponsored for the Community Hub. The lobby of the Community Hub will be named in memory of Jerry Edelman, founding Agriplex board member by Coleman Savings Bank Foundation, with the multi-purpose classroom being named after Big Doc and Judy Williamson, where students and farmers alike will meet to grow in their knowledge. There are other naming opportunities available, including the $300,000 Teaching Kitchen sponsor, two $100,000 Teaching Kitchen partners, Porch and Breezeway for $300,000, and more options. The Agriplex encourages the community of Coleman to join in on the capital campaign with donations from $1,000 to $100,000, earning you or your company's name on the donor wall. For more information, contact Rachel Dossie at colemanag at gmail.com or 256-339-6218. The Coleman County Commission called a special emergency commission meeting for today, Tuesday, January 23rd at 1 o'clock p.m. in the commission meeting room at the Coleman County Courthouse. The Coleman County Commission's regularly scheduled monthly meeting was set to happen on Thursday, January 18th. However, dangerous road conditions and a state of emergency saw that meeting date postponed. Now that we have the top stories out of the way, we are going to take a quick break before returning with sports. Hello and welcome back. Now it's time to find out what's going on in the world of sports with stories from Coleman Tribune sports editor Nick Griffin. 
After a week of icy weather postponed the start of the county basketball tournament, our local teams were finally on the court at Wallace State's Tom Drake Coliseum Monday night to begin the chase for this year's county championships. To tip things off, Cold Springs and Vinemont clashed in the opening round of the JV Boys Tournament. Cold Springs held a slim 18-17 lead at halftime, but Vinemont took control in the second half, outscoring the Eagles in blue 33-13 in the final two quarters to claim a 50-31 win and a spot in the JV Boys semifinals. Hayden Robinson led the way for Vinemont with 20 points in the win, followed by E.J. Sharp with 13. Braden Hallman led Cold Springs with 10 points in the loss. Vinemont will be back on the court Friday night to face top-seeded Fairview in the JV Boys semifinals. Another JV Boys matchup was on tap for the second game of the night, this time between Hansville and Good Hope, but it wasn't quite as close as the first. The Raiders jumped out at a 39-14 lead over Hansville in the first half and continued pulling away in the second half, securing a spot in the JV semifinals with a 66-25 win over the Bulldogs. Good Hope's Aiden Black led all scorers with 21 points in the win. Aiden Young added 13 points for the Raiders, and Gabe O'Nilla led Hansville with 7 points in the loss. Good Hope will be back in action Friday night to face either West Point or Holly Pond in the JV Boys semifinals. In our first varsity contest of the night, Cold Springs girls faced off against Hansville and the Lady Eagles dominated from start to finish. Cold Springs led the way 32-18 at halftime and outscored Hansville 33-9 in the second half to wrap up an impressive 65-27 win and secure a spot in the semifinal round. Malia Taylor and Ella Brewer each posted 18 points for Cold Springs in the win and Ella Dickerson finished with 10. Aaliyah Twitty led the way for Hansville with 10 points in the loss. Cold Springs will be back on the court Thursday night to take on either West Point or Fairview in the Varsity Girls semifinals. To wrap up the opening night of the tournament action, Vinemont and Fairview battled it out for a chance to play in Friday night's Varsity Boys semifinals. The Aggies built a 27-18 lead in the first half and extended that lead 46-32 in the third quarter before pulling away in the fourth to wrap up a 64-44 win over Vinemont and earn a spot in the semifinal round. Kobe Payne led the Aggies with 18 points in the win, followed by Landon Smith with 12. Jeremy Harbison led the way for Vinemont with 17 points in the loss. The Aggies will be back in action Friday night, facing top-seeded Good Hope in the Varsity Boys semifinals. That covers sports for today, but make sure to check with the Coleman Tribune each day for the latest in sports coverage from across the area. We'll be back after this message. Welcome back to Coleman Today, where we are going to get into our news rundown with four stories in four minutes. Let's go. The 8th annual St. Bernard Athletics Booster Club Drawdown and Dinner is set for Saturday, February 10th. The evening promises to be a fun one filled with games, silent auction, delicious catered dinner, and the chance to win big with one lucky attendee walking away with $10,000. The annual drawdown acts as the largest fundraiser annually for St. Bernard Prep Athletics programs, bolstering the importance of these programs and the positive impact it can make on a student-athlete's time at St. Bernard. Tickets are $100 and admits two into the drawdown dinner. This year, insurance is available to purchase for an additional $25 per ticket and guarantees two chances at the ultimate prize of $10,000. To purchase tickets, contact St. Bernard Athletics Administrative Assistant Leah Messick at 256-962-0620 or email lmessick at stbernardprep.com. Stonebridge Farms is holding a special Valentine's Night event, which is coming up soon. Couples and groups are invited to reserve a spot at the Brownstone Center on Saturday, February 10th. Sophia's Buffet and live music will make the night a stress-free, intimate event, perfect for a romantic date night. Rose and assorted flower arrangements will be available to buy and be personally hand-delivered to your Valentine, or Stonebridge staff can deliver to their residents for an additional romantic surprise. Reservations are required and are $50 per attendee. Colder temperatures often bring electric usage and billing to an all-time high. Temperatures as low as zero last week, along with many residents missing work and pay due to the road conditions, food pantries across the county are preparing for an influx of visitors from in-need families. 
Melissa Betts, the director of the Link of Coleman County and its food ministry, the Master's Hand Food Pantry, says our phones have been ringing with questions about food pantry hours and potential utility assistance due to the loss of wages last week. In 2022, we typically saw 20 to 28 families each week in January. In 2023, we saw around 40 families a week in January. This year, we are averaging between 140 and 190 families per week. After surviving the ice storm of 2024, many residents are dreaming of warmer temperatures and sunny days spent in the garden. Give your landscape a local boost and support educational programs fostered by Coleman County Natural Resource Planning Committee by attending its native tree and shrub sale slated for Saturday, February 24th, beginning at 9 a.m. at the North Alabama Agriplex. The committee's annual sale is planned to run until noon or until sold out, whichever comes first. All trees and shrubs are species indigenous to Coleman and will be sold as bare root seedlings. Seedlings will be priced at $3 each. Local forester at Alabama Forestry Commission, Mary Claire Smith, says all proceeds stay right in the community, benefiting and bolstering natural resource education here in Coleman County. All proceeds help support our FAWN program, where sixth graders come and learn all about Alabama's natural resources. She explained, noting that while the sale is scheduled until noon, buyers may want to get there early to secure their seedlings. For more information on Coleman County Natural Resource Planning Committee, visit www.facebook.com backslash Coleman NRPC. Now for a quick break before we look at the weather ahead and pay our respect with obituaries. I'll be right back after this quick message. Welcome back. Let's take a moment to pause and remember those who have passed away this week as we turn to obituaries. Lelis Allen Tucker. Lelis Allen Tucker, age 69 of Hansville, passed away on January 16, 2024. There are no services planned at this time. Coleman Funeral Home is honored to serve the family. Tasha Frederick. Tasha Frederick, age 34, of Dallas, Georgia, and formerly of Good Hope, passed from this life too soon on January 3, 2024. Coleman Funeral Home is honored to serve the family. Brenda Joyce Wilcott. Brenda Joyce Wilcott, 74, of Coleman, Alabama, passed away on January 21, 2024. Mrs. Wilcott was born in Leeds, Alabama on December 17, 1949. Friends are invited to join the family for a time of visitation on Wednesday evening, January 24, 2024, in the Holly Pond Funeral Home Chapel from 5 p.m. until 7 p.m. Holly Pond Funeral Home is honored to serve the Wilcott family. Sister Eleanor Harrison, OSB. Sister Eleanor Harrison, OSB, a Benedictine sister of Sacred Heart Monastery in Coleman, Alabama, died peacefully on January 21, 2024, at the monastery at the age of 97. Reception of the Body with Vespers of the Dead will be at 4.45 p.m. on Thursday, January 25th, followed by visitation until 7 p.m. The Mass of Christian Burial will be at 10.30 a.m. on Friday, January 26th, with burial in the monastery cemetery to follow. All liturgies and visitation will be held in Sacred Heart Monastery Chapel, 916 Convent Road, Coleman. Milton Ray Basel. Funeral services for Milton Ray Basel, age 83, of Coleman, will be at 11 a.m. on Wednesday, January 24, 2024, at St. John's Evangelical Church. Reverend John Richter and Mr. Nathan Williams officiating. Burial at Coleman City Cemetery. Visitation will be from 10 a.m. until 11 a.m. on Wednesday, January 24, 2024 at St. John's Evangelical Church. Coleman Heritage Funeral Home is in charge of arrangements. Francis Althea Taylor Vickery. 
Frances Althea Taylor Vickery, 62, of Haleyville, Alabama, passed away on Friday, January 19, 2024, at Vanderbilt Medical Center in Nashville, Tennessee. Visitation will be Wednesday, January 24, 2024, from 12 p.m. until 2 p.m. at Nichols Funeral Home in Haleyville, where the service will be held at 2 p.m. Burial will be at Bodish Cemetery. The family wishes to expend a special thanks to the staff at Vanderbilt Medical Center and Haleyville Health Care. That finishes up obituaries today. Our hearts and prayers go out to their friends and family. Now for a look at today's weather. Today's forecast is showing a high of 51 and a nighttime low of 49 degrees. During the day, you can expect a 50% chance of rain, which will likely continue through the afternoon and into the evening hours. The high is in the mid-50s and the afternoon will reach the mid-30s with southeast winds moving at 10 to 15 miles per hour. The nighttime dips down just slightly with the chance of rain intensifying to 70% and being mostly cloudy. Lows could dip down into the low 40s with southeast winds at 10 to 20 miles per hour. As we look ahead, it seems as though the rain will be sticking around through Wednesday, so plan accordingly. Remember to stay safe, everyone. That concludes our broadcast for today. Thank you for joining us on Coleman Today, and we'll see you again tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. Remember to have a great day, be safe, and stay dry. Until next time, I'm Katie Spicer for Coleman Today.